Okay, I think we're live and in concert. I better do a little thing here to get so people know where we're at. Okay, welcome back. We're at the afternoon session of session four. We're having a little technical difficulties. I was, had hoped to do some stuff off the computer, but we're going to uh, make do here with some things in the book. Excuse me. We're going to go to session 5A, which is right after the risk, risk management part. It's 5A-2 is my first page I have up on the on the uh, projector. So we'll do our best to get back to that. There we go. All right, we're gonna accommodate the people that are here the best we can and uh, if something doesn't work online, be sure and uh, notify us and we'll help you out. Okay, we're just going to review a little bit of this uh, importance of complete records. And some of this might be a little redundant. We've probably talked about before that, uh, you know, obviously accurate and complete records are very important. You know, it's going to go on here about complete set of records, income and expense. I mean, some of this stuff seems obvious, but you'd be surprised how I get out on farm visits and, and you know, people think they're done with everything and they forgot to put in their automatic withdrawals or they... Uh, just just some of the things that some of us think are obvious, but yet they get omitted. You know, your your 90% of your work you did is worthless if you didn't put in the other 10%. Uh, plan accounting is the first basic part. Okay, obviously, for what types of records you need are farm receipts and expenses, inventories of crop, livestock, etc. That's something that. You know, we get in the habit of, of just doing an annual balance sheet for the lenders and stuff. We need to do those things for our, our own records. You know, remember that, that it's our business. It's not, we need to do that for ourselves and not just, just to satisfy others. If we keep a monthly inventory, it's a whole lot easier to account for, you know, something that died or, or purchasing something because we get to the end of the year and it's like, well, did I buy him and buy those 20 cows in May or June? You know, pretty soon you're digging through something else. Uh, inventories of equipment, buildings and depreciation, that's probably more of an annual thing, more so than the livestock deal. Inventory of all liabilities. I like to, in these record keeping systems, we'll get uh, beginning balances in there of all your loans and you'd be surprised how through the year, if you have that correct, I like to call a bank and say, you guys did something wrong versus you know, we get in the habit of calling the bank or getting on our online and, well, whatever they, whatever they got is right. Well, it isn't always right. You may find somewhere somebody didn't get a memo right. They, they paid, all the, paid all interest instead of part of the principal. I mean, these are just prime examples. Uh, back up to number one there, farm receipts and expenses. I have a, I'm going to keep referring a little bit to, in case you haven't told, can't tell by yet, myself and or farms that I work with. I had a gentleman uh, this year who switched loan officers, switched banks, and they, for whatever reason, he started depositing his corn checks and stuff, and unbeknownst to him, they were just taking that deposit and just putting it right on his operating loan, or, or just because I, I get to help him uh, edit his checking account transactions, and I'm like, well, where's your you know, he had, had no actual income, or income accounted for in his accounting system. It was just going right to the bank. And I said, well, we got a, that's a nightmare. And, you know, it was easier for the gals at the bank, but that's totally wrong. We got to take that money in your checking account and then transfer it and pay the loan. Uh, crops raised in livestock acquisition and disappearance. We kind of talked a little bit of that with that monthly record book. No matter how you do it, whether you're typing it in your phone or what my own bad habit is, uh, you know, you 
you uh, make a lot of effort in keeping track of that calf book when you're tagging and stuff, you know, at least once a week, sit down and make another copy of that or get it on the computer somewhere because you know darn well that thing is going to fall out of your pocket, get run over, be out in the rain, your toolbox, your tagger box is going to leak. I mean, have multiple places of that and have one that's safe from the elements. Records of, uh, another thing about that, when we go out and do, you guys, when I say we, I mean us as producers, doing your inventories and stuff, try to get a real piece of paper instead of a back of an envelope or, or whatever, and do something with that as soon as you get in the house. You know, write it in something good, put it in a file drawer, that stuff that, you know how it is in a dash of your pickup or underneath your seat in your tractor cab, pretty soon it's gone. Okay, I highlighted household and personal records. In our program, we don't try to dabble into people's personal spending, but, but we do help them if they want to split that up. And it, it's an eye opener for everybody, folks. I mean, you guys maybe are young enough, some of you that don't have families yet and stuff, but it's something you really gotta keep track of. I'm not trying to tell you to be a miser, but yeah, you kind of do, but it mostly just know what you're spending. And you'd be surprised at the end of the year how, uh, how much our farm has contributed to our family living. That's something we do in our analysis class and stuff. We'll, like for example, when you buy your, pay for your utilities and your fuel for the house, you know, sometimes we're probably deducted, charging, you know, anywhere from 60 to 90% to the farm for a lot of those things. Well, you know, if you were working in town, driving back and forth to work, you know, now that's deductible. So you kind of got to take into consideration how much we are making that farm, farm pay for of our personal needs. What are some of the most common uses? Okay, obviously to construct a financial statement, tax prep, uh, you know, we dwelled on that a little bit earlier with, you know, we got to account for that income and expense to assist in obtaining credit, obviously, to uh, make your cash flow plans and stuff. All right, now, this might seem like a monumental task to me, but I'm trying to get to the next page, which is number two. More of the reasons to keep accurate records is continued there, determine total farm profitability. You know, we can uh, work, work, work out there we got to sit down and do some anal analysis at the end of the year. I think a little bit later here it's going to say how much time you're supposed to spend, spend doing that or whatever. I mean, it's, it's not a so many hours, so many minutes. It's what's productive. If you've got a partner, if you're sitting down and, and, you know, back to the goals we talked about earlier. Setting goals, having meetings. That's a big thing with our uh, level two program is, is uh, enterprise analysis. And that takes a lot of details, but... But you're doing that for your own benefit to know, just like some of the stuff Vince was talking about this morning, you know, is, is my cattle a, that big a drag on the business that I should be going all the crops? And if you're, you got to look at long-term trends in your operation. You know, this crop deal could go completely opposite in an awful hurry. And, uh, you know, we're low on cattle numbers, all that stuff you hear, and, and whatever. If you're in it for the long haul, you look at the long-term trends. Personal family spending, obviously we just talked about that. To determine the strengths and weaknesses, I just touched on that a little bit there. What is involved in setting up a farm record keeping system? Uh, it says here in the second sentence, a, a FinPAC farm analysis can be done with any complete and accurate farm record keeping system. I had a gentleman last year that had did everything on pencil and paper and it was a very fairly large farm. He did a lot of adding with the Adam machine, but you know what? It was all correct. It all checked out. So you can have the, just the same way feeding cows. You can feed them with an M and a F11 loader, or you can have the brand new Maxim. Not, you still gotta get out there and do it. Feed them right, feed them the right nutrition. One big thing I know Chris has mentioned earlier is uh, Whatever computer, whatever record keeping system you use, be sure it's simple enough that you can start small and add to it or make it more in depth. I'm gonna take just a time out for a second. Chris, I am not successful in getting that 
to come off the computer. I talked to our tech man. So this is where I'm going here is just off the document camera. And we're going to hopefully we'll have it on tape. If not, we're addressing the folks that are here live. Set a place aside in the home for doing your farm record keeping work. Uh, how many of you guys got three or four kids around yet? Or not yet, meaning meaning already. Some of you guys that don't, you're probably like, what's he talking about? I got my I got my basketball clothes over here, I got my work clothes here, and who cares, you know? Well, quite a bit different when pretty soon uh, kids are coming home with uh, book bags and schoolwork. And so you need to have a place whether it's a corner of the kitchen or something that just needs to be yours. And, and, you know, obviously we all hope we have a big corner office with the two windows on both sides and, and all that. But, but you know, it's, it's, it's getting it done, keeping it current. Don't need to be the fanciest thing again. Uh, a little bit later here, I think we talk about, you know, the standards of, of having a place to go to work and all that stuff. A little bit of that is personal preference. You know, I know some guys that they want to have their office in their shop and their comment is, I want to do my work there, so when I come home, I'm home. Totally respect that. <clears throat> At the same time, I know when I was farming full-time, I enjoyed, instead of being hid in the basement somewhere, which for one thing, a basement seems like a dungeon, or at least it always was in my house, it's dark. And, and you're, you're away from everything. I like to have my kids come in and, and say, hey, Dad, look what I colored in school today. I mean, I can take a moment or two, look at that. Otherwise, you're, I find myself doing that stuff constantly or way in past their bedtime. Pretty soon you don't see them. Okay, enough about that stuff. But, but just uh, the main thing is have a comfortable area where you can work in. You might find your time is uh, the people I work with. I, it's kind of comical because some people especially the gals, you know, will probably do this work after the kids are all in bed. I used to find the best quality time I had on a desk was about 5 in the morning to 7 in the morning before anybody got up. So you guys pick your time when that is. and It's kind of funny because I'll get texts or questions or emails from my ladies, as I just mentioned, at 11 o'clock and, you know, I'm, I'm done. And, but I'll read it at 5.36 in the morning and I'm like, well, do I send it back to them or not? You know, because they're obviously a little different schedule, so we're all individuals there. Develop a filing system for bills and receipts. There again, customize it, just uh, keep it organized. Separate the unpaid from the paid. The, uh, I don't mean to skip here, but it's gonna say a little bit later, you know, deal with the stuff that you need, mark paid on it, throw it away. Two thirds of our stuff we get is junk mail. And that's, this was wrote in probably 2005, that's probably up to about Seven eighths now. Make lots of notations in your system. Learn to trust your notes more in your memory. You'll find that out more as you guys get in your uh, 30s and 40s that you just can't be expected to remember every little thing. Uh, I can remember who played, uh, who won the second or third Super Bowl, but I don't have any idea who won three or four years ago. So that's just a prime example. By the way, one and two was the Green Bay Packers. Learn to trust your notes. We just did that. Okay, number, uh, hang on here. We'll get to page three, which was a massive accomplishment of turning the page. This is something you can obviously do at home and, and uh, you know, just in your, in your mind. You know, how, how am I doing with this? How, am I, how would I improve? And your goal of when to start. Hopefully that uh, was January 1 of 13 to implement any of these things that are on there. Page, this is session, this is a 5A-5. I'll try to get that on the very bottom so you, for reference of what page we're on. And once again, I'm having a little technical difficulties with our system. So I'm doing this out of the book in the old-fashioned lecture style, and we're commenting a little bit on each item. <clears throat> what types of record-keeping systems are available, and what are some of the advantages and disadvantages? Okay, record book systems. You guys are probably been on computers since, and when I say guys, I'm talking to the people we have in class here today. 
which I assume you get fellows are anywhere from 20 to 35, whatever, I don't want to age anybody, but you're modern enough to uh, probably not want to be pencil and paper and adding up things anymore. So we might kind of skip number one a little bit here. Number two, hired accountants. The advantage is less time and effort required by the operator, which I'm not sure that's totally correct because initially getting that set up may take a little more time. Personally, I would like to see you doing it yourself, preparing the records for your tax person for the sake of, of accuracy. And quite frankly, I don't care to give flat out piece of paper to my accountant and because there's probably some questions he's going to have that I'll be able to answer if I'm sitting there next to him. If I don't have a couple hours to spend monitoring my uh, income expenses with an accountant, I think maybe, maybe I ought to relook at my workload for the day. Uh, disadvantages with them accountants, the cost is typically higher if you got somebody doing that. The highlighted part there, individual enterprise or profit center records may be neglected. Uh, accountants are more worried about, more concerned about just numbers, dollars. You as a farm operator need to be more focused, or equally focused on units, bushels, tons, pounds, heads. And then we look back and, and see, hey, we were profitable that year because, my word, we got, we got uh, 54 cents for our butcher hogs that year. And, this year, the average price was 32, you know, just, just things like that that you can, uh, whatever. It's very important, back to the same thing with the inventories and how much we sold or bought. Any questions so far? I'm sorry to be, I, uh, would it be a fair statement to say I have less knowledge than Vince since you guys aren't asking me as many questions as him? Okay. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> We got to have a little fun. You got to make fun of yourself every once in a while. That keeps everything uh, in perspective. The operator may have a tendency to lose some knowledge of the farm financial structure because someone else is taking care of that portion. Exactly. Uh, you know, if, if you're just focused on run the combine, feed the cows, pretty soon uh, you become kind of a, a laborer to your operation versus the manager. Advantage of computer, computerized records naturally are. You can get the information very quickly. Less material to store the records. Uh, I'm a little old fashioned. I like to have a print out papers and have them stashed somewhere too. Flash drives are a great thing. I mean, I run across people that I have to, that's part of my monthly visit is to make dang sure they back up stuff. I recommend having two or three of them and, and have one that you use every two or three days when you're doing something, have one that's maybe you, you uh, back up to every week, get one of them in a safe, hide them from the kids. Uh, that's a pretty important deal that, you, that um, obviously you don't want them hauling that around in their little toy semi and running over it with their monster truck. It should be very accurate and detailed because uh, the computer's not going to have a mathemat or a, an adding mistake. That's a big, big plus there. Disadvantages, I kind of put a not applicable there because most of us got a computer around for various reasons right now. Operator must learn a skill. I don't think that's really pertains anymore because that's just the way things are now. We all have color TVs too. It may at times, this is a good point, it may at times generate too many reports or too much information. That's kind of back to where, you know, we keep it simple, uh, get comfortable with what you're doing, get comfortable with your system, and then maybe add some more details or add some more uh, categories and stuff like that. Accuracy of records is based on the accuracy of the inputs. Obviously, our same old comment, garbage in, garbage out. Earlier here today, we've been discussing how uh, with our drought-related feedstuffs, we are kind of getting garbage in and, and getting a little better stuff out right now with, with all the uh, nutritional supplements and stuff we have, but, but uh, we want to stick with our, our alfalfa type records It's cost us the same as our cattails, so let's keep it in, good in and good out. 
become familiar with your system. Obviously, I just touched on that. Record book systems, that's obviously by hand. You want to have something you can change. Ad adequate computer system protected by a surge protector. Backup disks and related materials, just like we talked about the backup disk. But yes, definitely a surge protector. You want to make sure your uh, computer person, your accounting system is able to run with your memory and all that of your computer. There again, the filing stuff. I mentioned earlier about getting your any, beginning inventories into the accounting system, you know, whether that's your assets, you know, your checking savings accounts, even uh, corn inventories and, and dollars, because as I was saying, that, you know, if you keep putting in those units and bushels and pounds, they will subtract that away from your inventories too. And I just want to reiterate about getting those loan numbers in there because that's, that's a great way to a check and balance for the, your lender. Remove all the previous years. This is just making entries in here. You want to be sure you uh, create a new, a new year if your system requires that. The, talks a little bit about the Commodity Credit Corporation loans. That's somewhat of a, th or not real, used a whole lot right now with our commodity prices, but uh, that was a huge thing uh, a few years ago when I was farming uh, full time and feeding a lot of livestock, you could you could seal your grain for that dollar eighty two. Say your cash corn was a dollar sixty, you could seal your corn for a dollar eighty two. And as long as you bought that back, you had until the next July to buy that back, nine months whenever you took it out. And as long as you bought it back below the ceiling price, you did not have to pay interest on it. So that was a big thing to watch. You know, you remember the LDPs and all that. That was Pretty big deal back then. You know, that was marketing was obviously just as much or more important when you're dealing with those small numbers as they are now. And of course, their interest rates were quite a bit higher. Be sure you document your check and deposit numbers for reference. Get the right date, price or value. We touched on all these things. These column numbers and stuff are pertaining to uh, that old record book yet. So they don't really don't cross over to any specific computer programs. Any questions so far? And I just want to say again, this may seem a little elementary, but it, it's very important and, and it gets taken for granted quite often. Sometimes when... Uh, I found the last couple of years, as dry as it is, you're always, even though you don't have much crop, much hay to put out, there's always something you can do. You know, when, it, when you got a rainy day, you're a little bit limited, unless you've got a nice shop to work in, but you've almost got to discipline yourself to say, all right, once a week or once a month, I'm going to get this stuff up to date. I don't care. You just don't look out the window. Yes, yes. Monthly cash flow is a good thing to uh, monitor. A lot of your cash flow plans you've done for your lenders have them in a monthly format. I mean, obviously you don't can't expect to stay right on the exact month, but at least you know when your loan payments are due. You know, if you didn't meet your objectives of income this month, you know, is it is it coming in the next ten days? That's all understandable. All these. Uh, Things under item K, I think I've pretty well touched on there as far as keeping cropping information and all the homegrown feeds. Number six, the homegrown feeds fed. That is something that we all could improve on, myself included, and that's a big uh, timeliness thing too. You know, we, we got record of when we wrote a check for mineral or when we bought some creep feed and all that stuff and we got pounds, but equally as important is, is uh, knowing well, we fed those animals from our inventories or and that because that's you know you have your I just talked to the uh, ag kids yesterday you know we all have those ration sheets that the elevator man nutritionist might have made out and that's what we follow on our daily feeding 
but we need to write down in our feeding ledger, or whatever you call it, you know, when did we switch our ration from a 48 to a 50 or to a 58 to a 62? And, uh, and when we have our month done or whenever period you cut off or a week or whatever, just take those pounds, divide them by that formula of percentage in and, and get those numbers wrote down before all of a sudden in December, or I should say February of 13, you're trying to figure out what you fed in January of 12. It's just, it's really difficult and, and then our inaccuracies fall into play in a hurry. And you'll have down what went through that wagon and all those things, but what we like to do in our farm business management, you know, obviously we're keeping track of inventories beginning of the year and end of the year. So we kind of got to make a double check there. Some places for air there is, say for example, you call your, your bales you harvested in June, if you're going to call them 1,800 pounds at harvest, and then if we're going to try to cheat when we feed them in December and call them only 1,500 pounds, well, you know, we got to be on the same page there because it ain't going to take long and, and your inventory is going to be off. And, you know, even though the scale, you know, you're going by the scale, well, okay, what did they weigh to start with? How much storage loss do we have? We have to, who are we going to charge the storage loss to? You know, in my mind, our, let's say we have three or four different beef enterprises, we got to go by how much feed disappeared off the inventory. Somebody's got to get charged for it whether the coons ate it or the pigeons or, or their neighbor stole it for his horses or the deer. But the reason we have that hay around is, is to uh, make the cattle profitable. Fuel, labor, utilities, all that general farm expense is a very important thing to, that's another thing we do in our FinPAC analysis is those are overhead, called overhead expenses and we allocate them out based on work units. It's a, a uh, allocation factor that goes to, like corn takes a little more labor than, than soybeans because obviously you're hauling 150 bushel an acre versus 30. Dairy cows take more labor than a, than a U, kind of like the uh, AUM calculator splits them up. Anyway, it's, it's pretty easy for us all to come up with our direct costs but our overhead expenses can vary greatly between operators, size operation, how much you got paid for, and it's something we gotta, gotta, gotta know too. This page 5A8 is stressing a little bit again on the, probably specifically the farm biz and the record book stuff, so I'm gonna Probably browse over that. This is kind of uh, okay. Now I'm on five A nine. This is a little bit of a time management thing, which is really important. Short of time, not enough time for yourself, your family. Does it seem the more rush you get things done, the shorter your days get? Is the time left over for family too short or non-existent? We've probably all been there. Things like you work, 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 work all the time. We need to uh, set some time across and say, hey, even though it's not, even though it's not dark out, I can quit anyway because they, you know, this is what I planned. This, these were my objectives for the day. I've accomplished them. Let's be happy with that. First, we must deal with the clutter we need to eliminate. Is your desk piled high with paperwork and paper? I would be guilty of that. I used to blame it on the kids having their uh, schoolwork there and the mail getting piled off. Now I have my own office and uh, apparently there's still some junk piles up. So that's, that's some self-discipline to, you know, if it's not something you dealt with or looked at in the last week, get rid of it, get it filed somewhere. This kind of goes on with uh, just an example of having some file cabinets, what to put where, suggestions, obviously. Keep 12 months of folders to hold your, all your checks, receipts, purchases. Okay. Then it goes on to, you know, machinery manuals and all this kind of stuff, but obviously a lot of us are getting some nice shops to keep that stuff in. Uh, some of you, that would be a better term, more accurate than some of us. 
Pay, that's a big one you're down at step four. Pay your bills and file them. It's nothing I hate worse than when you, you kind of decide whether I paid this one or not or, or what have you. And there's where that statement come in of two thirds of the mail we get can be tossed. The other page here, 5A10. This goes back a little bit to when we were talking about goals and, and meetings with family, etc. Set up communication periods. Have meetings that are short and to the point. You know, we don't want to talk about the, you know, talk about the ball game last night. Talk about that first or when you're done, whether it's a, whether it's a family meeting or a township meeting or a school board meeting. I mean, you have to have a set, set agenda, stick to that, and then when you're done, do mm -hmm. all the coffee shop type talk. On the farm, mobile phones, keep, this will save a lot of steps, yes, but we don't always have the old, uh, the benefit of seeing each other's body language, whether we're uh, saying that with our eyes rolled or, or not. I would like to, the mobile phone thing there, what I've noticed in the past society the last 10 years by having my own hired help or my kids and stuff, I think these mobile phones have turned us into helpless Hannahs, so to speak, because whenever something comes up, we just call somebody else and ask them. I'd like to stress, have you stressed to your employees or, or, you know, make them take a moment and assess what's wrong. You know, sometimes you don't even get out of the cab and like, oh, the pickup isn't running on the baler. Well, get your tail out there and see if the chain come off or if the belt's slipping or whatever before you call me. I mean, it's something I would... You know, there again, that's personal preference. Maybe you got a guy running a machine that you don't want him to get out of the cab and do anything. But, but that's just kind of a something to go through when you start a person on a task. Delegate work. That's a pretty important thing, I think so too, because so many of us think that, you know, you, I'm probably at this stage in your operation, you are you are probably the guy. You're doing all the work. You're you're doing the business end, the pitchfork end. You're doing the planting, harvesting, and all that, but as you get larger and, and maybe you're starting to realize that I can't do all this anymore, you know, don't be afraid to delegate things, contract out work that, you know, this, they're talking payroll, bookkeeping and that, but, but uh, you know, stuff like spraying and, and all that, you know, you got to manage your time and your resources. Get enough rest, that's, plan a realistic to-do list, I talked about that a little bit earlier. Step nine, continue to train yourself on changes going on around you. That's very important. Workshops, tours, classes, trade shows. Just look at the things you guys are discussing here today that you probably wouldn't have opened your mind to. I mean, we were just talking earlier about different different ways to manage betting is just a prime example. I mean, but you know, we get into uh, various production things. Uh, I always figure those, th for one thing, it's a good break, if you can call it that, but it's still, still business oriented, but you get to some of those trade shows and that, and, and some of these guys become lifelong friends that you'll meet there, but, but also, you know, you'll hear gobs and gobs of information. If you can take home two out of the ten things they talk about it and implement your, I'd call that a win. Take time to plan each day. We kind of talked about that a little bit the one to two days reviewing. Attitudes are a secret power, working 24 hours a day for good or bad. That is so true. You know, the old thing, whether the glass is half full or half empty. Okay, I think I'm running out of pages. I think we'll take a break now, guys. Any questions?